Walla wide nas her longer tide. Och itch om et her. Was at the hale? Itch hot the alduina? Itch spreke be tham wordum wedon and bone. Today I'm going to be speaking about the verbs bone and wezon, which are the Old English for to be. There's a difference in the meaning, which I will cover in better detail in a separate video, but the basics are bone is the future or unchanging facts. It's kind of a mix of both. It's kind of a bit of will be and kind of a bit of was, is, and always will be. So, for example, uh, Alfrich writes, Allo god thu the avre ware on nu art on avre bist on almichti god. And that translates to low god, but as you can see, it's actually this circumlocution that I put down there, which is uh, you holy trinity, father, son, and holy ghost, you who forever were and now are and forever will be one almighty God. So you can kind of see it's a bit of like will be, and in this case, it's very clearly will be, but sometimes it can just be like kind of this eternal truth. And so Baal is a bit weird. Wezon is just to be. Ich am Alduina. I'm Alduina. Uh, so they're not equivalent to like Spanish ser and estar. So don't think about it in terms of Spanish. It's not just Baal means will be. As I said, there's kind of like a mix between will be and like is eternally, unchangingly, but oftentimes it just translates to will be, but not every case of will be can be bound. Um, and they're only different in the present tense. They have the same past tense. So there's, there's no like past tense bound. It's all kind of the same thing. And the distinction is more distinct, which I now recognize is a little bit redundant, but there's more of a distinction in earlier speech than later speech. It was kind of collapsing, and obviously in modern English has completely collapsed. We don't have like Weson Bern, we just have B. So Weson and Bern are very irregular, but the forms will look familiar to English speakers. And this is pretty much because the word to be and the words Weson and Bern have been kept very similar to how they used to be because they're very common. So people are reluctant to like change and regularize it because it sounds too weird. Like if I was to say like, you know, I be, I be going to school, I be going to school, like instead of I'm going to school, like that's, that sounds weird. Uh, in standard English. Obviously there are dialects where you can say I be going to school, but it doesn't mean the same thing, but that's not important. Anyway, uh, be is the only verb left that mostly preserves like all this kind of irregular stuff, and it mostly preserves the entire like conjugation system of the Anglo-Saxons. And although it's an irregular verb, uh, it's a good comparison for what's going on with more regular verbs in Old English because a lot of the same forms are like kept separate in modern English in the word to be alone. So like I am, you are, he is, whereas most like are just I sit, you sit, he sits, we sit. It's like a little bit different. So here's the present tense of Weson. Uh, again, this is just like I am, you are, not like the weird one. So each elm, thu art, he heu hit is we wit ye yit he sind or sindon. They mean the exact same thing. One is just shorter and one is just longer. And then in the subjunctive, so I may be, he may be, etc., etc. Each see, who see, he heu hit see, we wit ye yit he seen. So. A lot of these forms are familiar. Ich elm, I am. Thu art, thou art. How is, she is. Uh, but then there is a sindon, which is not familiar to English speakers, but if you speak German, then wir sind, that's familiar. Um, there is a form in Old English, which is auron, which is more familiar to, old, to modern English speakers as 
we are, but that's not very typical of West Saxon Old English, so I ignored it because otherwise I'd have to put in like every single form that ever existed and it would be it'd just be too much. So uh, this table here is basically like West Saxon and just ignoring like dialectal forms. So just to keep it simple, because otherwise we'd have like at least three or four different forms just of I am. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, and C, C just died out, so we don't have that anymore. If you speak German, you'll recognize it from like the word sei in German, like Ehre sei Gott, uh, glory be to God. Uh, and of course in English it was replaced with B, so from Bern. Um So some things that will hold true for every verb in the language, which you can learn from Weson, all the plural forms will always be the same. There's no difference between we, they, you all, all plural forms will always be the same. And so I'm just going to shorten we, wit, ye, yit, he to uh, we, etc. Just so I don't have to write that much and to make it cleaner looking. So, and all the subjunctive singular forms will also always be the same. So, each see, thu see, he, he, hit see. It's all just see. It's that way for every verb. And weson is just the first verb I showed you. So here's the present tense of Bern. This is like the weird futury to be. And again, you can see the things I just talked about. If you look at the subjunctive, each, thu, he, he, hit, bell. Um, and if you look, we, etc. is bell, and bern. So each bell, thu, bist, he, he, hit, bith, we, bell. Each bell, thu, bell, he, he, hit, bell, we, bern. Easy enough. These are all very similar to each other. Uh, notice the uh, vowel change, each bell, thu beast. Um, when we get to uh, strong verbs, we're going to see a similar pattern of vowel changes. Each and all the plural forms have one vowel. Thu, he, he, hit have a second vowel. And subjunctive has the same vowel as each, we, etc. So, and here's the past tense. Each was, thu, war, he, he, hit, was. We waren. Subjunctive, ich war, we waren. And I didn't write this in the slide, but I'm going to mention it now. Uh, when you say the subjunctive, ich war, that means I would be. We waren, we would be. So, I probably should have written that, but I said it, so there you go. Uh, notice that ich was, he was. I was, he was, they're identical. Uh, that's the same for every verb, uh, as I wrote right here. Uh, each and hit, etc. will always be the same in the past tense. So I was, he was, we've mostly done that the same in modern English, but that's also because other than was and were, every past tense is the same in modern English. So, but I was, he was, it's, that's what I was talking about, how the word to be kind of preserves this like conjugation stuff. Um, and the other forms, like the command forms, like if I wanted to say be there, uh, westar, uh, that'd be the imperative. So, and so the singular imperatives would be wes and bell, and the plural imperatives would be wesoth and belth, and the participles, which is just the words being and bin, um, the word being would be wesende and bellende, and bin is a bit of a more difficult uh, case. In early Old English, there was no such word as been. You just could not say, I have been. It just wasn't a thing you said. Um, in late Old English, they innovated yabown, but they didn't do the same thing with a wezen. There is no such thing as like yawezen. Yabown, if you want to say bin, that's your only option is yabown. So anyway, uh, it's long yet there, that who you saw, I mean, you won't hurt. It's I'm glad that it's back to touch on the out. Uh, thanks for watching.